Okay, so uh, I know you've all been waiting to see the uh, finished uh, Space Wolf set. So uh, this is its in its completed form. Now I'm a bit limited on space in the workshop, so um, I've actually span the board round so you can see it from its end. There's still another uh, two boards that go on this end, but it's uh, I can't walk all the way round it to film it. So uh, I thought I'd set it up in this this um, way round so I can get to the two sides and just go through some of the features um, that uh, that we've made so this is the the um, the main walkway over to uh, the landing pad uh, the two main doors there in the uh, in the position in this position I'll go through the different positions that they can be put in and um, we have two doors two main doors these can as I've shown can be opened so things can come in and out and then we have um, the small bunker which also has access into the bunker uh, this is just a standard space marine so I'll drop him in I don't know if you can see that he can actually peer out through and then the roof section can be placed back on Quite nicely. It's just these little touches that that really really help. There's steps at the back, uh, plenty of doorways in and out, and a doorway that goes through to the main um, inside section as well. So troops can actually come out through a side door rather than coming out through the main door. Uh, on top we have the ramparts. So if I take that marine out and put him back at the top there, you can see that they've got quite a nice view down onto the road. Uh, each um, door section has um, the trench running from one side to the other. This joins in the middle via the central door. So each um, rampart section also has a flat section on top uh, so the extra cannons and guns can be placed in and I've used the bunker tops uh, for the top as well so extra sort of cannons can be placed in at the top. Okay, so these are the two main door boards broken down. Um, this is easily the trickiest part of the whole board. Um, the construction of the doors themselves was a mammoth task. Uh, it's all been laser cut. Um, it's about seven pieces thick. The door itself is four pieces thick. So it's quite a substantial um, sort of build. And we had to have two of them. Uh, we wanted um, to make um, this as... Uh, sort of customizable as, as possible so uh, basically the the doors themselves they sit actually onto the main boards so they get lifted on there's um, door one and door two and they're labeled underneath so that's door uh, number one and then door number two so they they lift on um, removing the sort of ramp piece uh, interestingly, again, the boards can be used without the door, so the detailing underneath, um, that, that's all there. They can also be placed back to back, which I'll show you uh, in a second. So they, they just literally sit in, into that uh, slot there. They're quite happily, um, you know, sitting in there with no extra fixing required. Uh, I've made these magnetic um, sort of cover plates to go over the top to hide the gaps and just to sort of clean the whole thing off uh, and there's also a plate that sits uh, in the middle which I'll show in a minute but before we go on to that I wanted to just show you um, the actual ramparts. The ramparts themselves are designed to sit um, on the floor themselves so they could be used independently um, on the flat uh, terrain boards. Um, they can go um, back to back independently uh, without using the door boards so they actually designed uh, to fit together so they can go that way round to form um, some sort of central structure. The central structure is large enough, uh, the flat area is large enough to put extra detailing on like um, the extra cannons or even the um, smokestack from the forge just to give you a completely different idea of how to use it. Uh, you can also put um, the landing pad at this end. The primary use is to actually sit on the main doors. Um, they're labelled underneath door one, door two on the inner edge. So if I 
turning it round you can see which ones which but basically in the right configuration which is the uh, landing pad in the centre uh, the large rock work um, goes at each, each end so that they can um, access through the central position uh, so, so worked very hard to figure out how to get these to stay up uh, originally we had columns holding them up but it was really difficult the columns kept falling over and it was really difficult to position so in the end we um, decided to make them secure with uh, bolts so now the tricky bit obviously is where it sits it basically sits um, in the sort of uh, sort of holes, location holes, which match the laser cutting um, on the edges. So it's a little bit tricky, but basically once you've got it um, on the top, using the snow as a sort of guide, once you've wiggled it around, it should sit um, into, a, a, into its slots. You can then uh, do up the bolts using the Allen key, which I will provide. Let's locate like that. And then I think um, I was really pleased. I wouldn't over tighten them. It's only going into the MDF. Um, but you'll find that that is pretty secure now, um, even though it's got a, a deep overhang. So very happy with the way um, that worked out. Um, so we talked about um, how you get through the bottom. There's various different holes and pipes coming from the front end. There's a suggestion of... Um, Sort of um, sort of tunnels going through to the the, the back edge. Uh, you can also access um, the rear section by lift, removing this plate, allowing creatures to come up either through the central uh, hole or through the whole um, panel itself, depending upon um, how how you want to fill. There are some holes into each each um, position. Um, so that's how you get access to here. This is tall enough um, to have Space Marines in, and the idea being really that this would be the rest of the complex. So some of the some of the um, spaces haven't got interconnection, but it's just to give you the representation that there's, there's a massive, great big base or some more structural bases beyond. Uh, you know, it can be played um, with with the top on or without. Um, so if you wanted more of an access um, to the rear, you can play it without the actual ramparts um, and, and keep it all open. Okay, once the two sections have been um, placed on and put together, the two, the two boards can actually be positioned back to back. Uh, so they go together. They go together like that. Which gives you um, the opportunity to play... Um, as if it was uh, like a long wall section and then I have a capping piece that just sits in uh, which goes across um, to fill out to fill out any gaps so that's an alternative way of putting the boards together there's enough space on top um, again to use the cannons or the other features so it's just a different setup again very nice uh, small little skirmish board if you want to fight from one side to the other uh, be quite interesting uh, small game and you can use the other boards as well you can put the two um, snowboards either side and so sort of make it longer or um, put them onto the side here okay turning the boards around uh, back to the front which is um, the sort of primary sort of um, setup the boards can be pushed uh, together um, to leave the space for the uh, landing pad and then all that's left is the two um, ramps up to the door need to be put in uh, th these have both got um, numbered so you've got one and you've got two so they slot in with the grill towards the um, the door itself and that sits up on the secondary um, ridge so they just they flat in there which finishes that off nice and then those two would be then ready for um, the landing pad to be put in. Um, they can also be swapped round, so these these break apart and they can be swapped round to the other way. So, it works. Let's give you a completely different look and feel. So 
they can be pushed together that way around. Which gives you a, a, a bit of an extra sort of um, configuration with a central, more of a central bunker system. Um, now also included um, some two larger sections of hex. Uh, these have been specifically designed to go on either side just to give you access to um, the top. There's also access um, to the back through um, various pipe works. There's the sort of suggestion there's holes that are buried beneath the rock work to give you access uh, to the rear sections. Um, but I just thought I'd show you. These are magnetically connected so they can be removed. Okay, once the two door sections are put into place, um, is we can now put in the, the main landing pad. Um, now you don't have to use the landing pad. The landing pad um, can be can be you know taken away, and you can use it in this format, where you've got the opportunity to set up um, various battlements or or you know extra gun positions. I've also included um, these fins, which are removable. So if you didn't want to use the landing pad, you've got a little bit more of extra detail in there. Um, just to sort of finish that area off. Um, you can put in the hex rock to make steps up to uh, the top. So it really leaves uh, it quite flexible. Uh, then next you put in the main landing pad rock work piece which slides underneath there like that. And then the landing pad itself sits um, over the top with the um, the control panel towards the the rear doors um, the battery compartment um, for the landing pad is on the back if the batteries need to be placed for the lighting that just sits um, nicely in there uh, do watch um, you don't break off this uh, the sort of icicles underneath because um, obviously they're they're sort of quite fragile I have um, resined them all in so to try and help that but uh, there's always a balance between how fragile you make things. Um, once that's in position, then you can place the main door, which again sits over the top, and that just sort of finishes off, off the landing pad, and then the, the central landing pad gangway can be um, put onto the front, or, or not, or it can be left in this position um, without the walkway um, opening up the front area. I've also made the snow um, dark in patches and a bit muddy to give the impression that uh, stuff has been sort of landing. Uh, the landing pad also has um, built-in lighting, so uh, I don't know if you can pick that up, but uh, there's a flashing light repeater that has various different settings all built into this uh, little console here. So by pressing the red button, you can actually change uh, the sort of light functions on that. Didn't want this to be too um, in your face. I wanted it quite subtle because I think, um, you know, it, it, you didn't want really it flashing away like a Christmas decoration too much. Uh, so I've made that quite subtle and the light's quite small. So you can adjust the different flash rating on that. So that's, that's the landing pad. The landing pad also has um, significant um, icicles hanging from below just to give it that extra um, ice feel. These have all been um, resined in as well to f uh, for extra safety. Uh, I mean they're going to be fragile. Um, as always it's difficult to get the balance between how fragile the set is uh, and how robust because obviously it needs to be played on so I'm hoping they'll survive okay. Okay, thanks very much for watching the movie and it shows how some of the board is put together and there's some more instalments coming to show you the uh, front sections of the board and also a closer look at the forge so uh, do check those out and thanks very much for subscribing.